there was no particular Bitcoin or anything else that you thought you bought on FTX that was being stored for you, that it was just giant pool of cash that they were just abusing. And it's becoming clearer, even after Sam Bankman-Fried's tweets recently to a journalist, that maybe he constructed his whole personality as well, and that none of that was real. Hey guys, welcome back to Library of Wealth. Today we have Raul Powell giving us his reaction to the recent collapse of FTX and why many investors are starting to panic. The crash in Bitcoin has been a significant event in the crypto space as well, but with major players like Ethereum still intact, FTX hasn't phased the dominant crypto assets. Powell discusses the significant amount of fraud that led to FTX's demise, as well as where the crypto market is headed next. He believes that with the enormous capital and lack of governance that is taking place, it's clear now that many warning signs are being overlooked. Raul Powell will also give us his market sentiment for crypto and reminds investors of when this has happened before and predicts where we go from here. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. It is not clear to me that there wasn't systemic fraud in this whole thing to start with. The story is now coming out. It's coming out in waves. And again, nothing is verified here, but it's starting to appear that FTX was just a front for Alameda to capture customer order flow to give them an advantage. It's now becoming clear that FTX and Alameda, because we can now assume they're basically the same entity, which is very bad to have a trading operation that takes advantage of customers. We've also seen that, that they changed their strategy from being these lower risk traders doing arbitrage, buying one thing, selling another, or very quick trading to big position takers. And it seems that the Luna debacle was them just providing liquidity all the way and it blew them up and they pretended it didn't hurt them. But it seems that Alameda itself had changed what it was doing quite a while ago and was basically a punter. Then there's the confusion of who all these people are and half of these people don't check out properly. We then hear from the guy, the, the guy who's gone in the CEO, who's the now the, the liquidating CEO. And he's like, I've done Enron, I've done all of these. This is the worst mess I've ever seen. So again, news flow's coming out slowly, but it feels like there was never any proper accounting, that there was never any customer positions that weren't being used by Alameda. Again, not clear yet, that they just pulled everything together and there was no particular Bitcoin or anything else that you thought you bought on FTX that was being stored for you, that it was just giant pool of cash that they were just abusing. And it's becoming clearer, even after Sam Bankman-Fried's tweets recently to a journalist, that maybe he constructed his whole personality as well, mm -hmm. and that none of that was real. Powell says that he expects there will be weaker growth, and that means the Fed will begin to come into the picture. He believes the most important thing to do is purchase crypto. Raul notes that the entire financial world is short on the crypto upside, and the more prices increase and regulations shift, the more they have to be included in the crypto market. Powell says the regulations have had a bigger influence than anything since the introduction of Ethereum and stablecoins, which is why he has always been max long in his positions. He's a smart guy, right? There's no doubting Sam's not a smart guy. What I think he saw, probably inadvertently, was that in crypto, you can do whatever you want. I don't even know what sort he was illegal. I'm not even sure using customer deposits is illegal in crypto because Gary Gensler and others had not regulated. It depends what jurisdiction, how far their regulations got. But this is a problem. So it happens endlessly in the securities industry because that little pot of gold, which is customer money, people just can't keep their eye on the precious that's over there. They want it, they can use it. I can make return on capital and then it goes wrong. So this story is as old as the hills. It's a deep fraud. It's so it seems it's now on the scale of Bernie Madoff and Elizabeth Holmes and Enron. It's an accounting fraud. It's a cult of personality fraud. It's um, many, many things. I've never in my career seen sentiment like this, both in crypto and the stock market. Anger, resentment, fear at this moment of a scale that wasn't in 2008, wasn't in 2001. I've never seen anything like it. So there is an expression Warren Buffett's used it, is when the tide goes out, you see who's swimming naked. So the tide out in this is liquidity. And liquidity is driven by central banks trying to stop inflation. 
So they raise interest rates when they think there's inflation. It slows down the economy. It's harder to borrow money. The whole economy slows down and we restart. It's called the business cycle. That cycle drives the movement of asset prices. And so that's the stock market, the bond market, equity market, the currency market, the crypto market. And with that cycle becomes the human emotion cycle. And the human emotion cycle is, I'm making a fortune, I'm a genius, I'm a genius, I can never go wrong, I'm gonna be rich, extrapolate, extrapolate. Future vision of myself is now gonna be driving a Lambo and you know, et cetera. To when the market goes against you, you have to go through the emotional inner journey of, oh, maybe I won't get there, right? That's really hard for people. It's emotionally really hard to kind of plant a flag on that's what my future is definitely going to be, definitely, because I'm really good at this investment game, to I was completely wrong. And what happens is you then over-extrapolate on the downside. If this continues, crypto is going to zero, all of my savings that I've been dollar cost averaging, listening to Tom and Rel, it's all, you know, this has been a scam. It's the exact opposite. But when you step back, you take a nice logarithmic chart of Bitcoin, and anybody can do that on trading view or any of those charting things, and it's a nice, smooth upward trend, which is the adoption of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies as a new financial system and a way of exchanging value on the internet. In the middle of that, on a log chart, it just looks like it slowly does that. On a linear chart, it looks like this. Mm. No, it looks like more correct, it does this, collapse. And what happens is everybody goes, when it goes up on a linear chart, everyone goes, it's a bubble. People who aren't involved. Then we all get to the over extrapolation of like, we're all going to be billionaires, let's order my Lambo. Then it starts coming down, it's denial. Typical, you know, the human phases of emotion. And then you get to anger and despair, which is where we are now. But... That's all, that whole story of humanity, liquidity, central banks is all within this long, smooth uptrend that keeps going. And people forget it. They forget it at the bottom and they forget it at the top. And it's as simple as that. Raul has invested across multiple digital hedge funds and has observed that many things are being overbought. Powell says that during this time in the market, it's smart to immediately seize opportunities and to not wait for new lows to come in. This week's crash brings a sudden reversal after weeks of relative stability for Bitcoin and Ethereum prices. Both tokens are now down more than 20% over the last week. Raul Powell believes that we aren't going to retest lows based on growth, but we'll have more sideways consolidation until the rally for crypto in 2023. What do you guys think about Raul Powell's take on the future of the crypto market? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Library of Wealth. We'll see you in the next video.